Tech Up. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and we'll be bringing you tech news and reviews on gadgets, apps, peripherals, and more. Here's what we have for you this week. We talk about adorable mice looking for a good time, robot skin, AI learning about humanity online, and more. New research shows that neurons in our skin may be carrying out the same type of computational calculations that also go on in our brain. Somewhat simplified, it means that our touch experiences are already processed by neurons in the skin before they reach the brain for further processing, which scientists thought only happened in the cerebral cortex before. The discovery has the potential to change current approaches to rehabilitation following a nerve injury, since now we know that the brain may not be doing all the work in that system. They're like tiny computers embedded in your skin, so we're all essentially RoboCop now. Japan has unveiled a new asteroid probe that will use a heavy cannon and metal bullets to blast off chunks of the asteroid's crust and return samples to their labs. The probe, named Hayabusa 2, is expected to be flung into space on a rocket for a mammoth four-year voyage to the unpoetically named 1999 JU-3 asteroid. When it gets there, sometime in 2018, it will release a powerful cannon which will fire a metal bullet at the asteroid's crust, once the probe itself has scuttled to safety, of course. If all goes well, these pristine asteroid samples will be returned to Earth by the time Tokyo hosts the Olympic Games in 2020. And in case any asteroids come Earth's way, this powerful cannon can blast it to pieces, Armageddon style. A computational system called RoboBrain is learning from the internet by downloading 1 billion images, 120,000 YouTube videos, and 100 million how-to manuals. The information is being translated and stored in a robot-friendly format that robots will be able to draw on when they need it. To serve as our helpers, robots will need to understand how the world works and how the humans around them behave. Robotic researchers have been teaching them these things one at a time. How to find your keys, pour a drink, put away dishes, and when not to interrupt two people having a conversation. The system employs what computer scientists called structured deep learning, where information is stored in many levels of abstraction. For example, RoboBrain knows that chairs are something you can sit on, but that a human can also sit on a stool, a bench, or the lawn. This is a really interesting project, although I must admit I'm slightly worried about robots learning how humans behave from YouTube videos. A team of engineers has developed a new material that uses pencils and solar energy to desalinate water quickly and efficiently. Turns out, desalination or sterilizing water with solar energy is way harder than Hollywood makes it look. The average yield is only about one cup per day, even when you've got eight hours of sun and plenty of water. A team at MIT has developed a cheap material that desalinates water efficiently and fast. The graphite in pencils has holes in it with just the right shape to concentrate solar energy and create tiny hot spots. Water creeps into the holes through capillary action. The droplets then heat up quickly and evaporate. The biggest issue going forward will be how to deal with all the salt because eventually the pores will get clogged. But even still, it's a very cool innovation. DARPA has announced Electrix, a program to develop tiny neurotechnologies that will hook up to your brain and monitor your body's reactions to illness and other injuries. The technology could fundamentally change the manner in which doctors diagnose, monitor, and treat injury and illness instead of relying only on medication. Injected into the skin with a needle, these tiny chips would continuously assess conditions and provide stimulus patterns tailored to help maintain healthy organ function and help patients get healthy and stay healthy. The purpose was to create a system for monitoring soldiers, but the project announced this week goes even further, beyond the monitoring and into the healing game. We'll see if this will be successful, or perhaps just provide a new idea for a brand new television series. Scientists have found a way to turn negative memories into positive ones using light and mice. The work was done in the lab of a Nobel Prize winning immunologist turned neuroscientist at MIT. They first created positive and negative memories in mice by giving them either a food reward or a mild shock when they wandered into a certain part of their enclosure. Such memories have two components that are encoded by different parts of the brain. The memory of where it happened is encoded by the hippocampus. The emotional component, whether it was good or bad, is encoded by the amygdala. To try to switch a memory from bad to good, 
Researchers reactivated neurons where he had a more positive stimulus, in this case where he spent quality time with some lady mice. Prior to the memory-altering procedure, when the researchers put the mouse in the enclosure where he would received the shock and used a pulse of laser light to reactivate the memory in his brain, the mouse avoided the area where he'd gotten zapped. But when they did this after the memory-altering procedure, the mouse spent more time in that area and even sniffed around a bit, as if looking for his lady friends. His memory of this place, it seems, had changed. A new facial recognition software for Google Glass called Shore identifies emotion, age, and gender in real time by using a database of over 10,000 faces. This Google Glass app is based on its tried and tested Shore system, which stands for Sophisticated High Speed Object Recognition Engine. Shore started off as an object detection computer vision system, but over the years it has developed into a face detection and find facial analysis system. It can pick out a person's face with a 91.5 success rate. The possibilities for implementation are great. Market research is an obvious one. For instance, a camera above a store window display to track reactions of those glancing in, as well as customizing advertising playlists depending on the demographics of those watching. In the future, asking someone how they're feeling might be a thing of the past, because you'll already know. That wraps up this episode of Tech Up. Make sure you leave your comments and thoughts on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think and suggest some apps for us to review in our recap. I'm Sarah Ingram and we'll see you next time.